Good morning. Today's Monday, April 13th. Welcome back after your long weekend. Um, your objective for today is I will demonstrate my understanding and knowledge of the Reformation movement during the 1800s in America. And I will complete a study guide to demonstrate that understanding. Um, I want to do a quick review from last week. The last section you read was about women's rights or women's suffrage. Suffrage is the right to vote. The women's suffrage movement or women's rights movement in America came out of the um, Second Great Awakening that started the temperance movement. And these same women who did the temperance movement, then a lot of them went to the abolitionist movement. And then from that decided, hey, if we have, if we're getting rights for, uh, for slaves and to give, to give them freedoms, shouldn't women also have the rights too? And so then a few women, um, like Lucretia Mott, she was a Quaker woman. And remember, it makes sense that the Quakers would be some of the first in this. They definitely were abolitionists. They were, you know, they were the ones thinking, hey, everyone has the same rights and we all have a right. So Lucretia Mott was the first, one of the first women. And then she met a lady named Elizabeth Cady Statton. And these two women were the foundation for the women's rights movement. Um, and they actually were the first ones to start, they did this thing called the Seneca Falls Convention. It took place in 1848 in Seneca Falls, New York. And it got a group of women together and some men, like Frederick Douglass was there. Um, and they wanted women's rights and they wanted women to have the right to vote. Um, they wrote a declaration called the Seneca Falls Declaration. And it was um, mirrored from the Declaration of Independence. And except that they put, you know, it was about women's rights instead of the rights of man, it was man, womankind. Um, and then another lady jumps into the women's rights movement. And that was a lady named um, Susan B. Anthony. Susan B. Anthony um, is one of the ones that you guys do know that they talk about with the women's rights movement because Susan B. Anthony ended up on the, on the like it's gold dollar, you can, I'm sorry, silver dollar. Um, that you can still use today. It looks like a quarter, it's just a little bit bigger. Anyway, so Susan B. Anthony jumps in and she thought that women should be um, treated well and that we should have the right to vote and we should be educated. That women are just as smart as men and should be able to be educated. Um, during this time period, there were some women that were pretty significant. Um, one of them was Catherine Beecher. Catherine Beecher thought women should go to school but she thought women should be learning how to be better housewives and mothers. Um, and she started the women, Milwaukee's College for Women. Um, and then, but there were other women that said, no, we should have women learning math, science, social studies, everything. They're just as capable. And one of these women was Emma Willard. Um, and she started a school called the Troy Female Seminary in upstate New York. And then another woman named Mary Lyon, um, she was a teacher for 20 years, and she started the Mount Holyoke Female Seminary in Massachusetts. Um, during this time period, if you were a woman and you got divorced, the men got the, the children, which later would be reversed, and it was almost always the women in the 1900s. Um, but at this time, the men had all the power. And if you got married, in a lot of states, if the woman had um, property, the man would get it, even though it came from her side of the family. Um, during this time, women were breaking uh, barriers. Um, for instance, Elizabeth Blackwell, she was one of the first women to ever get into um, medical school, and she became a medical doctor. Um, another woman, Maria Mitchell, um, she ended up um, using the telescope and doing scientific um, analysis of the skies. Um, and that was just really some of the, the women at that time. Uh, 
Today, you're going to be doing the first half of the study guide. You can do the people today. And then tomorrow, you'll do the um, events. And then Wednesday, you're going to take a test. I will put the test up on Wednesday, and you'll have, once you open it up, you'll have three hours that you'll have to get it done and submit it. You will have to submit it by Sunday evening. Okay, but once you open it up once, you can't go back. Um, good luck with all this, and we'll see you tomorrow.